Hello everyone, I'm Robin with Robin's Re3. Today we're going to be painting our gingerbread gnome. I'm going to be using this on Wednesday uh, um, as part of an arrangement or a wreath. I'm not quite sure yet, but I just thought I'd go through the steps of showing you how to paint this and assemble it. Okay, let's get started. Now, I I do like the, the markers, the Posca markers, but the white never shows up enough for me. So what I plan on doing is using the um, white Adirond Adirondack uh, folk art uh, chalk paint. I get that at Hobby Lobby. I think I got that at Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to pull it in a little bit here and get started. Now for this white, first of all, this is the bottom layer. You do not need to paint the bottom layer. So we're just going to put that in the stand aside. I have everything figured out of my colors here, but I really want to do these first. And then this is going to be, okay. All right. So what I do is I make sure I have this shook up really good. Now we're going to use our um, our dabbers for this. These are dabbers. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. These are great to paint with, especially when you have lines, because you don't want to get paint in the grooves, and this is just an easy way to do that. So I'm going to put a little in my container here. I'm not going to need a lot, although we have the beard, so we might end up using more, might end up needing more, excuse me. So let's just put the lid on that, put that aside. I'm going to get my dabber just wet, but then I'm going to dip it in and I'm going to blot it. Very simple to paint this. Sometimes I will go back and do a second coat because sometimes it needs a second coat for it to show. If you get any on the sides, it's no big deal. You can always go back with a brown magic marker or a brown paint marker and color that in. But what I'm going to do here to make it easier on some of these little pieces I'm actually going to put some of this tape directly on my counter and I'm going to tape it down. I want sticky side up because that is going to hold my little pieces in place. So that is that. So let's go ahead and put these here because these are going to be hard to work with. So again, I blotted it in the paint and I'm kind of getting some of it off. See how that just keeps it in place for you? It's great for working with small pieces. So we're just gonna put that aside. Then we're gonna do our, and I'm gonna make sure before I paint that I have it right side up. Okay, that fits on there. So yes, I have it right side up. Just blot off and dab. Very, very simple. People get intimidated by these sets because they think, oh my gosh, I can't paint. I don't do well with paintbrush. This is the easy way of doing it. Easy, faster, easy peasy. There's that. Next, I want to do the beard. So we're going to dab off some. Now, if you wanted this beard to have some texture, you could go ahead and add some baking soda to the paint. But I like it smooth. Because I am going to be putting the gingerbread 
over top of it so I want to make sure it's going to stick. Just get that out of my way. And these dabbers do last a while. You just have to clean the tips. And I just use regular soap and water and squeeze it, like push it down. I find it, it also gives it a more even surface coat than if you went and used a brush. Sometimes you get streaks from your brush and this is just easier. Sometimes your brush, your dabber needs a little bit of water in there. So I just dabbed off some of the excess. You can do it like this if you want, but it leaves strokes. I think you're better off dabbing. see it's not sticking just what I mean by sticking don't dab it as much on the paper towel if you're having to go back over a spot several times like there I took it straight from the paper towel I mean straight from the uh, tray Okay, there's our beard. Now, let me think here if there was anything else we needed to dab. We could start with this. Let's just, I'm going to put paint on this. And see, I'm following a line here. I actually took my piece and drew, traced this so I knew where to stop. And you can go pretty much directly right up to the area that you are painting. Like it has a curve, so you can actually take advantage of that curve to get what you, where you wanna go. I'm gonna pour a little more in because I drew stripes on here. Not everybody wants them. I do. That was probably too much. But let's go back and get this a little bit better. There we go. So the next one's going to be red. getting up pretty close to the line. Now I am going to need my small angled brush. That is the easiest way to do a line. And if you are un, if you don't, well, how do I put this? If you're not good at this part, you could always put a piece of tape there and do your white lines first, and then go back and do your red ones. I 
after they dry. You can just tape off your sections. And again, you wouldn't have to do the stripes. You could just paint this one solid color. But I actually took the bottom piece and I used this bottom curved piece to draw my lines. Let's go back and use the dabber. Just try and load your brush up and then just gently glide it along. I get most of my paint brushes on Amazon. And I can go back and add some links because I really wanted some more detailed brushes, smaller, for some of the smaller things that I've been doing. And I was able to get a nice set there that had the sizes I needed for detail. Now, I find it easier to do it this way, so I'll just turn it around and then glide. Try not to get too much paint near the edge so I keep going back and working my brush through the puddles that I have there. Alright, I'm going to let that dry because I don't want to risk getting any of the paint on there. Now this one I'm going to do with this brown. In the large set of 29 there is a dark and a lighter brown. I think this resembles um, the um, cookies, the gingerbread cookies better. You know, I'm doing what I tell everybody to do. I'm not doing, but it's easier if you work with the grain of the wood. And sometimes with these markers and the wood, you need to go back and do a second coat. I just like mine really consistent and a really nice color. So usually I will go back and do a second coat. And I'm not really jamming it down, I'm actually just gliding it. If you do a lot of jamming, you're going to ruin the tip. And the reason I'm going this way is I don't want to get any off the edge onto the, the um, singed part. The mark the laser leaves on the side. So I'm going off of it like that. But see how when I shook it now I'm getting I'm getting a more consistent color. 
out. So you're just doing strokes. And actually, that looks kind of cute, kind of uneven there. But I'm just going back in and filling it in. into the tape. There we go. And just let that set aside. And look at how, how sharp that's going to look with that on top of there. Woo! I love it. Alright, these are going to be red. I do not have to paint this wiggly line because the wiggly line is going to be covered up with these pieces. I just love this red. I will show you what the other red looks like. And I don't care for this color. Some people would, but I think it has like a pinkish color to it. So I like the darker red. Now I may go back and put a darker color around the edges on this, like take a little bit of brown paint. Filling in some of the strokes. Now, let's do our cookies. Now, for this, I'm going to try and draw around certain, like her little bow. And her eyes. See if we can get some on her cheeks there. I don't know if I will be able to get the weight on her dress 
but I'm going to attempt it. I need my smaller brush. Actually have a smaller tip brush that's easier. Here it is. Perfect. Now where I got some on the dress, I can just go back and dot this near it. There. Let's see if we can do her neck. And again, you don't have to do this. Yep, it went red. Okay, I'm actually satisfied with that. Now, let's do that first. And then let's do the bow tie green. Do our gingerbread color. You could, even if you wanted to really dress this up, is buy little white rickrack and just glue it on there. And I'm not using a fine tip marker, and I don't have any issues getting in there close. So there's another one. All right, now we've got the rolling pin, and so these pop on the rolling pin. I'm actually using this color, and I'm looking to see. It says orange, but there are two oranges in here, and this is a lot darker. So I'm just going to use this. Thank you. 
I actually have a gingerbread person. It's going to be about the same size as this one, a dangle leg. They have holes here and we fix it so their legs just kind of dangle. kind of flesh color and that's what I'm going to do the nose and I may end up doing a second coat on this actually I have a paint that is basically skin tone. This is the Artist Loft. This is called Portrait Pink. out my dabber here and I think we're going to do the shoes. Now flip, 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 flip. And this is just regular acrylic paint. Just dabbing off a little bit because there are no lines on this heel. This is the heel of the shoe. So I want I want better coverage. So I'm just dabbing it once. If I had lines that I didn't want this to get into, then I would dab off more paint. why I think we wanted to score these and we've cut straight through so I think I'm just going to do this red let me see how much of this covers up I think I'm just going to do this whole thing red I'm going to rinse off the dabber and I'm going to blot it. See if we can get some of this black off of here. 
If not, I have another one. do these the same color that I'm doing the pants. going to color this whole thing. When you have big areas like this, it's easier to do it with the paint than it is with the markers. It's not in the way there. Let's just move that down. We're going to replace our tape. Now I got over on the sides a little bit, so I'm going to let that dry, and when that dries, then I'm going to go back and go over it with the white to cover it up.
and actually wipe baby wipe can get rid of some of that excess right now see that see how that cleaned that off I will be going back anyhow when this is dry and doing some highlighting to show you how to highlight. So we will go back and touch most of this up. Right now I kind of want to get a better um, coat over top of the pen. I should have used a pencil to draw my lines. This is black. So like I said, when this is dry, I'm going to go back, do a better job with the white. Let me see if I can take care of anything right now.
This looks like a cat hat cat hat. That's pretty good. All right. I'm thinking these are going to need a second coat. And while we're here, and we have the paint, I might as well just go ahead and do it now. Because it's pretty well dry. But I want it to dry better to put it together. And then show you how to highlight it in different areas. And I will, when this is all put together, I will go ahead and add the um, Krylon matte finish to it. It just protects it, especially if you're going to put this on a wreath and it's going to be outdoors. going to do these again because I did them with the marker and then went over them. I kind of want to tone them down a little. Okay, we're going to let this dry and then come back. Okay, we're going to get back to business here and we're going to do some um, highlighting. Now, one thing I like to do on my pieces is put a little like frosty edge on the side. I don't know if you can see that, but how I do that is I put some on my dabber and I go in on an angle. It just gives it a little frosty look, but you want to make sure you don't have a whole lot on there. Let's see how that kind of looks like. This hat's kind of frosty. And again, I'm going in on an angle. So I'm getting that edge. Let's kind of do around here too. And two pieces I forgot to do was the little candy cane and the little peppermint. So 
what we're going to do with those. I already painted them white. So now we're going to go in and I'm going to do every other. So I'm just putting a dot so I know which ones I have to color in. So it wasn't quite dry, so we're going to let that dry a little longer. This one should be dry. So we're going to start by gluing some of this in place because I find it easier to work with sometimes if it's glued. This is Gorilla Wood Glue. Hold that tight bond that they sell at Walmart is good too. And it's reasonable. It's supposed to be much cheaper than the Loctite. I'm going to bring you in closer so you can see what I'm working on. Take my darn shoes off. They get to you after a while. Whoops. Right. Now we are going to put this on and you want this to be up the top because that is where his nose is going to sit. some of this and I'm going to highlight on that and at the same time I may use some of it on the nose. Let's see how I really want to get that off of there. See I'm just going in it at the angle. It just put some highlighting on there you don't need to worry about the handles because his mittens are going to cover that. And I just kind of want to make it look older and a little bit darker to give it some highlight. There we go. Now, I think I'm going to do the same on his beard. Let's see how this, yeah. See, I'm just going in it at an angle. No paintbrush needed. Going to do up here. I don't know that that's going to matter that much. See how it kind of went ahead and highlighted the edges? And if you don't like it, you can go back, paint over, or you can go back 
and add a little more, which we did. Now for his hat, I had my white one here. Maybe I used it. Maybe that was the white one. All right, we're going to dip it in the water, get some of that paint off. Actually, if there's any left, we're going to dab it on here of that color. There is. So we're going to dab it on this white stripe. Just to, there we go. Now let's go ahead and go back to the white because I want to get some of the white on here. It just gives it a softer look. It almost looks like snow. I would start off until you get used to doing it where you dab a lot off and then you can go back and do layers. But see how it's just kind of putting a nice soft edge around that. You are going to look like you are a professional painter when you use this method. Very easy to do. Alright, that's going to go there. So, do I want to add... I want to add like a darker... So maybe we'll go back to adding the golden brown because that was the flesh tone that we used. So, let me get this on here right. Is it this one? Let's go ahead and add some of this. It's not enough. So, I will add a little more Stamp it out. And all I'm doing is this and this side of his nose. I'm not going all the way around. See how that just softens it? All right, so we've got his nose. And see, this is going to go down a little bit. Actually, I think I want a little more on here. So I'm going to go in just a little bit. There we go. So, the idea is to glue the nose on first because you have a really good base there for it to line up with. I'm going to go ahead and use some of this because I want to use, I want to do some dots on there with the white, so I kind of want that to stick as soon as possible. All right, we've got that there. And then this going to go here and that's going to butt up against it. And then this is going to go under here. Now because I have a little bit of that showing, I am going to oops, 
I had some pink on it. top of that. Alright, now we're going to glue our beard on. So I'm going to go back to this going to glue this in place. Did not need all that glue, did I? So let's wipe that off. place. All right. There we go. Now we're going to put our little little guys on. Now I'm not going to put them straight. I'm going to kind of 
maneuver them on a slant. And I'm not sure I'm going to use this. I think I'm going to add some sparkle to that. All right. Now, I need this. I want to make sure that pink is off there. <sighs> I pulled the whole cap out. No. There we go. Now, still have his shoes to put on. But I think what I'm going to do... Just going to put some little dots there in a line. And I'm going to do the same here in a line. And just going to make it look wispy like that. And we kind of want to shine to his nose. So. That. I think I want to add more color to the side here. And we need to add some color to his mittens or baking mittens. All right. And then I think we'll do a little bit. I'm going to need to paint the other side. So let's make his, his shoes look a little, oh, okay, so I didn't do such a good job on that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint, make that the back. That's the beauty of this. Actually, I came right off. <laughs> All right. There we go. And I could, too, go back to doing some of this on the side to soften it just a little more. Well, there we go. I may put this up here yet. I don't know. I want to do something else to that. I'm not totally satisfied with it. So, let me glue this to the top of here. And then he's going to fit in here once I line it up. There we go. Now, for this, I will show this on my live. When I go to put this in my wreath or however I do it, I will show how I add the ribbon to this and how we attach it in the holes there. I will um, show you how to do that. But there we go. There's our little gnome gingerbread baker. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining me.